So uh, part three, and we have someone else popping in. Uh, one, two, three. So we have someone else. Let's see who it is. Oh, it should be Paul. Yay. Hello. I'll, uh, I'll actually be. Hello. Be right back. Hey, Chibi. Hello. Hello. So, Chris and Chibi, will you give us an uh, introduction? You can go first, Chibi. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm Chibi Po, a page chewing lurker um, you know, who says things occasionally. So, <laughs> and I read books and collect transformers. Nice. Things you find out. My name's uh, Chris Moon, sometimes YouTuber, sometimes appear on streams such as this. And uh, do not collect Transformers. And in fact, I think the only Transformers film I like is the original animated one. Hmm. I tried watching one of the newer ones again just to see if it kind of like come around and grown back into them. And no. <laughs> uh, it would depend on which, you know. Um which show you watched um there's been a couple of shows um but i don't think it's been a few years since they've had a really good one mm. and by mm. a few years i mean something like um more than a decade <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i i believe i thought for sure hmm. yeah those movies are very um disposable i guess or forgettable oh well, if we're going to talk to movies um Bumblebee was good. Uh, I enjoyed Rise of the Beasts. I, I don't have anything, and I, and I sort of enjoyed the first live action one. Hmm. I don't have anything else to say, you know, anything good to say about anything from the second one until Bumblebee. <laughs> so, hmm. and this is as a long time fan. I'm like, I, I'm like, wow, this is this is terrible. <laughs> and I didn't. I saw the second one. Um, and then I didn't go see another one until Bumblebee. So it just got, they got worse and worse and worse. Just not a fan of Michael Bay's edit and style. A quick cut hmm. thing. You just, I don't know. I like that. Like the Transformers, the best thing about it was watch them transform, right? It does not yeah. be done quickly. You can just kind of, you can take your time with it. Oh. See, they make really cool toys. They always did make like super cool toys. Oh yeah, this the one's um, based off uh, Bumblebee design for a video game that's coming out, yeah. uh, and the design and his way he transforms and everything. I'm like, wow, this is really good. I gotta get this. Nice, nice. Very nice. How long have you been? Have you been collecting them? Um, off and on for. Uh, Pretty much since I was a kid, um, you know, I, I fell out of collecting them for a while. Um, I picked it back up. Uh, I collected it for, you know, when I had money for a few years, you know, earlier in the 2000s. And then stopped again for a little while because um, I just didn't like anything that was being put out. Um, I moved out here to Oregon and uh, acquired a job and suddenly i had to you know dis you know uh disposable cash and pick the habit back up again yes. in probably the worst way possible <laughs> um, well i discovered the unofficial um third party market where you know companies take the ideas behind the figures and design their own figures and they're not aimed at a, a kids at all so you know, so their designs are more complicated and, you know, and whatnot. And they, they do a lot of things that, you know, like toy laws here in the U.S. prevent them from, you know, a lot of things that they do. You know, they can't, you know, the toy, you know, can't like, like the drop test. If the toy falls apart, you know, you know, when you drop it, you know, it can't break into anything that would, you know, injure someone. It's like one mm -hmm. of the, you know, rules so that cuts them off from a lot of materials that they can use and whatnot God. Hmm. but yeah I was and... how's it going alex not bad at all how's everybody else good will you, will you give us a quick introduction 
Yeah, uh, my name's Alex, and when I grow up, I want to be a writer. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you can make it. Well, I've kind of been here all night, really. Yeah, well, <laughs> as you could join us, I guess. <laughs> you left up uh, International Man of Mystery off your introduction there as well, Alex. Um, yeah, I did. Um, I'm trying to keep that quiet. <laughs> so, sorry, my, my apologies. I'm trying to be mysterious. <laughs> That's fair. It's probably the best uh, the best route to take. They'll never see you coming. Yep, for sure. <laughs> uh, so, should we put with with your collection? Do you take them out? Do you leave them in the packaging? Because I I wonder if what's the, uh, or is it more just like a, what's your policy on that? I have disposable cash, um, but I don't have that much disposable cash. <laughs> um, if if I were collecting like the official figures, and I only buy those, you know, though I'm starting to get back into the official line. Um, if I were buying them, I might. But uh, generally, I'm like, no, I'm 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 not buying them as as a, like an investment or whatever. I'm like, no, I'm just buying these to to get them out and play with. So hmm. you know, because they 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 just end up being like I'm in meetings a lot, you know. So I'm like, they end up being something I can sit here. You know where no one can see it on camera, and I can just be fiddling with it and transforming it while I'm listening to people drone on. So, <laughs> but no, I, I like I like taking them out of the box and you know transforming them, and you know too much to to be one of those. You know, and I know some people are like, I'm going to yeah. buy multiple copies of this so that I can have one in the box, one transformed, one that's not transformed, you know, and so on and so forth. And I'm like. Do you uh, throw in a sound effect every once in a while? Yes, sometimes. <laughs> I, 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 even if it's a jet, I'll even take it and I'll be swooping it through the air and I'll go swoosh. <laughs> I mean, if you can't, you can't get your little robot, you know, that has a pair of laser guns and you know, just hold it up and go pew 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 pew. At another so robot, true. Then really, what what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, you're only getting like twenty percent worth of value out of the toys in the first place. If you're not doing the sound effects, you're only getting you're only getting a certain percentage. Yeah, I'm I'm actually sad a lot of times <laughs> that you know they've they've you know um, they haven't done toys that have sound effects built in anymore. Mm. You know, for the Transformers because I like some of those are a little you know a lot of fun and um, sometimes I'm like you know uh, I I think some of them that they made in like two thousand five or so that I had collected. I'm like, that was about the best time ever because it's like they had, some of them had sound effects and lights and like they did, mm -hmm. you know, some of you might've seen um, uh, Hasbro a couple of years ago did this official um, uh, crowdsourced where they, they made this, you know, gigantic figure. It's like 30 inches tall. Mm. Um, nice. Uh, and, you know, it's the biggest transformer that they've ever made, you know, period. Um, but he's, they did a version of him who's, you know, like maybe 12 inches tall back in 2005. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more of, uh, a, a better figure because it has lights, it has sounds, it has all these little things you can do with it. You know, whereas this big one, it's like, yes, it transforms, but he doesn't have any, his eyes light up, but he doesn't once you transform him, he's so big, like he turns into a planet. That's and he takes up so much space, and it's like, what do you do with him? You know, he's so big, you know, it takes you like an hour to transform him. and almost takes two people to do it. Yeah. And it's like, yes, he looks big and impressive, but if you can't play with it, what's the point? That's, that's a lot of sound effects for an hour. Like, they try and keep that up for a while, but it's moving. moving. That's, that's, you're going to be tired. Your voice is going to go voice. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, just, you know, star screen. Nice. Yeah, that and the bumblebee are my most recent ones that I bought. So that's what you're fiddling with all the time when we're trying to talk to you. Okay. Uh, okay. yeah, probably. You know, I've got a bunch of little ones sitting here on my desk. I'm probably fiddling with one of those. Yeah, so. I, don't know. I showed this last time. Everybody has figures. Like I, I have my Matthew Fox. Lost one. <laughs> That's impressive. You know, That's you know, I wasn't having one of those. I wasn't liking that show that much. That uh, 
you took them all. Is he actually the studs to go in an island? I threw out the island and just kept Matthew Fox, but he's got like dirt in his trousers and everything. It's brilliant. So life like. <laughs> so, <laughs> Alex, uh, you mentioned you want to be a writer when you grew up. But tell us about what you're working on. Um, well, the main thing I'm working on at the moment is carpentry in the Alvin Forest, which I've just gone past 52,500 words on now. Wow. So I'm about halfway there. And it's still just full of really bad puns. But more importantly, funny puns, you know. Well, yeah, hopefully. You say bad puns, but bad puns are usually good puns depending on what way you look at them you know um yeah i mean hopefully they're funny but they are they are awful <laughs> they are awful <laughs> all, all all funny puns are bad puns hey varsha hey i have Hello. the bottom lane all to myself oh, dear. <laughs> i i thought steve was going to do all the whole speaking of awful <laughs> <laughs> no, Chris. He, didn't do that. he didn't do that. He didn't do that. <laughs> you break um, my heart. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't say it. I said With Steve. Was blown up. No, no, I blown it. I blown it. <laughs> <laughs> Disruptor, wasn't it? Disruptor is the uh, is the official title, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Speaking of awfully disruptive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, so Varsha, give us an introduction. Oh, hello. My name is Varsha. I run the YouTube channel Reading by the Rainy Mountain, uh, where I occasionally post videos and do a lot of discussions on. And I also apparently disrupt a lot of things on the page showing forum. Yes, yes confirm. <laughs> In the best way. Yeah. So Varsha, do you collect figurines? I do not. Um, oh. I do have a huge collection of um, Beanie Boos. <laughs> um, I don't know if those count. Stuffed toys I collect. I oh, don't collect nice. figurines. <laughs> they love your back, though. I mean, the cuddly toys like generally love your back. Figure yeah. Matthew Fox doesn't love me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, he's very cool. It's, it's the way he's standing. He's very standoffish, you know. <laughs> Maybe if we get a cuddly toy version, it'll be it'll be make a lot of difference. Yeah. Uh, uh, Parmita, we know we have to to head out, but thank you for hanging out and chatting with us. It's always great to get your, Yay, your perspective on things. Thank you. you bye bye. bye. <laughs> Have a lovely time. Hi, Vusha. Congratulations, <laughs> Steve. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Um, I almost said thank you to the congratulations, as if she's saying that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of habit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so before we get to Josh's uh, question, Alex, what when can we expect, or what do you have a target on, or kind of like a timeline that you're working with, so we, when we can expect it? Yeah, I was hoping to finish it by the end. Of, whoop, that was oh. a book just falling off a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Death by literature. Yeah. <laughs> Your bookshelf's trying to kill you, Alex. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, I was aiming to try and get it finished by the end of this year, but that's really not going to happen. Come on, you've um, got at least 26 hours here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 26 hours to write half a book. No um, problem. I want to get it to my editor because I'm going to edit this one and then give it to beta readers. Because hmm. I think the last one I gave it to beta readers first, and there were too many errors in it for the beta readers to not see past Varsha, who pointed out an enormous amount of errors in it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get it to my editor as soon as possible, hopefully by the end of February. Hmm. Nice. Hopefully. Were you savage, Varsha? Your beta reading, just, just ripping it apart page by page. I was very kind, I thought. I <laughs> I hope. Sorry, I was she, she wasn't savage. She just spotted an awful lot of errors that I'd made. A lot That's of them the were just typos. I was I was just pointing out a lot of typos sometimes, which you know happened. Um, yeah. My um, the editor I'm using has also said to me it's 
the more correct way of doing it is to give it to your editor first and then give it to your beta readers. Yeah. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the pitch for the for the book? Um I'm useless at this sort of stuff. Uh you basically want to think about it or you want to Yeah, you pra- you got to practice. <laughs> yeah. Um basically a two um no not two a otherworldly being who helped creating create the world has decided that he's bored and the way to get over boredom is to release all of the inspiration into the world and that way he won't be bored anymore because everybody will be creating new wonderful things and everything will be great his counterpart realizing that this is a bad idea because the world will be destroyed by too much inspiration is trying to stop him he is using a carpenter called jeff who will go into the Elven Forest to get wood from the crow tree to make a box. And inside that box will be all the inspiration that Jeff has used to get to the Elven Forest in the first place, which will then be amplified by the magical wood from the crow tree. And when his fiance, who the book box is for, is open, opens the box, all of that inspiration will be released into the world. Hmm. <laughs> yes, that's cool. So, so a that, nice Pandora's of... box. <laughs> so it sounds familiar. <laughs> so when yeah, you're but... on Graham Norton, Alex, right? And the, and they're asking about the pitch, right? And then they go, have you got a box that you base this on? And you're going to have to produce a box. As I say, this was the box. <laughs> um, it's sitting on my fridge over there and it's got my Nespresso coffee capsules in it. Let's hmm. see. Yeah, practical uh, and stylish the source of inspiration <laughs> that's true yeah. Like that. yeah caffeine yeah <laughs> so i mean right. the, the tagline is going to be something along the lines of um it starts with inspiration and it ends with love oh. or something like that nice. because okay. love is going to have a big impact in stopping everything from going wrong hmm. which is kind of the cozy fantasy element to it the rest of it's just pure punnage <laughs> <laughs> i yeah like you're not the only one who's who's uh feeling like var a little uh because I, I beta read it i better read beta read it too and remember he talked just like well Varsha found a lot of errors i'm like <laughs> i was like I was just having a good time. Like I did, uh, I met a couple, but it wasn't anything serious. But I was like, yeah, so Varsha, great job. You should, great job beta reading. <laughs> I guess uh, transport skills from doing code reviews. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, Josh's question, anybody watched Godzilla Minus One? Probably the best movie put out in a while. Mm. I have nothing but great things. But not yet. Yeah. I uh I had to see Aquaman. Oh and, god. Uh, that was a train wreck. It was horrible. Had to see. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, my, my my nephew asked me to go. Mm. So I was just like, okay. You it, by just by your comment, it's like a like a mysterious van drove up to your house, like a bunch of people got out, <laughs> kidnapped you, tied you up, three in the back of the van. But where are we Tuck going? And made you watch the movie and then like dropped you off on a sidewalk somewhere, like dazed and confused. So yeah, it's, it's a little different. You know? Yeah, yeah, a little different. Uh, yeah, I, I I couldn't believe how I couldn't believe how bad it was. I thought it was just mm-hmm. uh, I was just like, it can't be that bad, right? So, <laughs> I'll go see it. And uh, it won. You figure? I mean, it'd be decent, but it was bad. Really the first Aquaman film is the worst film I own. The b- b- hands down, it's it's not even. No, no, it's not by Aquaman two. <laughs> <laughs> this is the game part of that challenge. The yeah, the, uh, she has to find a film worse than Aquaman. Jared, step it up and saying, "I I got you." I got you. Uh, I, I just uh, every time somebody spoke a word of dialogue in that film, I was. Hitting myself with a metaphorical hammer on the head. It was, wow, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, just just Momoa is not exactly known for his snappy uh, repartee. Um, 
it might be known for other things. But th- this actually is a genuine problem. I think going to the cinema, go into the cinema with people trying to find the people who will want to watch the same types of films that you want to watch in the cinema that you'll find good it can be quite challenging. Mm. Mm. I've yeah. never seen Godzilla minus one, but when Chibapo was talking about um, the 30 inch transformer, <laughs> my mind immediately put 30 inches into the Godzilla theme tune from the cartoons and thought, how ridiculous is that? Here he comes 30 inches tall. <laughs> kind of makes Godzilla seem completely harmless all of a sudden. That's all relative. <laughs> the fight I'd still lose <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's strange to, to make something like Godzilla seem interesting still after all this time I think it's it's kind of an accomplishment I think to to captivate an audience with the something like God or the Godzilla with you know it's been around for so long I think it's hard to you know um, keep it interesting after all this time it's like a giant monster how do you how do you make something interesting and do with that Well, for minus one, as I understand it, um, it's more going back to, like, the original. So, you know, you've had Godzilla versus Kong and all of that, you know, where, you know, Godzilla's the hero. And uh, for this one, he's very much not. Mm. Um, It's like, I think it's even set, like, a year or two post-World War II. So, you know, it's, it's Japan that's not, you know, in a good spot. And then... Oh, look, Godzilla comes, you know, around to make it even worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a very interesting franchise because Godzilla is characterless pretty much in every movie. He's, he's just a thing that turns up and either saves the day or wrecks the place. One of the two, and that determines whether he's good or bad. I mean, that's, sometimes he does both at the same time. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I mean, you, you say he's characterless, Chris, but you, you don't get to meet him off set. So. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can I, will, I, I will say uh, Godzilla vs. Kong actually was really good about giving him character. Mm. Um, like, there's the big fight he has with Kong, and he's just, like, ragdolling him and, like, you know, does the nuclear breath at him and, like, hurts him and all. And then they, they, they did a really good job of, you know, you can almost see Godzilla laughing at him. Like you know, just yeah. So uh so Jared, we know you have to run, but thanks for hanging out. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you coming by. Love it. It's great. Thank you. Thanks, Jared. Good car shot. So how are you holding up, Steve? Good. I might have to get up and walk around for a second. <laughs> But I know I'm leaving it. I'll just be gone just for a second. But I'll, I know it's in good hands, so I'll be right back. Don't say anything bad about me because I'm going to listen to this after. So, <laughs> oh, challenge accepted. So, I'm just going to listen to six hours worth. <laughs> no, I'm going to mark down the time, and then I'll be like, oh, what no. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I feel like we should have a live chapter read or something. <laughs> well, well, like cats away. Yeah. Nice to play. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Well, um, What's somebody reading? <laughs> or oh. not reading, as the case may be? <laughs> I started The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I am I'm surprised how fast it is going. Uh, I'm only 30 pages in, but it reads fast. I feel like for classics... I don't expect to get through them quickly or read them like I would. I think the fastest books for me are usually contemporary fiction or romance. This one read on a similar level, not as fast as romance does, but as fast as most contemporary fiction does, which is, it was interesting. I wasn't expecting that. So it's like the the scale goes from Dan Brown to Jani in terms of speed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Oh, I have to slow so much down uh, when I read Johnny's books. They are very rewarding for that, but yeah, I have to sure. plan for the time. A hundred pages. And I'm a very slow reader to start with. 
I normally take three hours to get through a hundred pages. I know there are people who can do a hundred in less than an hour. <laughs> How? <laughs> but uh, for me, it's three hours. And for Johnny's books, it's more like six or seven hours, I think. You need to get on my level. <laughs> now, this is something I've accepted about, about six months ago, TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, come on, people. <laughs> read them as many uh, you know just read them as much as i have and then you're just like you know so you start reading and you're like zoom can't stop yeah <laughs> and currently i'm still reading a little bit of uh slowly um uh, uh gods of the wordwood by um uh rj yeah um but i don't know i'm just i've gotten further in it but i'm just sort of like puttering along and then, you know, of course I have this. Oh, you're in Pearl's Gate. Very nice. Well, I, I've, I've paused, so I don't get too far ahead. And I'll probably, yeah. you know, I've got uh, Goodreads, you know, is about to hit, you know, start up on Grand Conspiracy, you know, right around the same time we do. So I'll probably just reread that. Yeah. Um, Pearl's Gate is two books down from Grand Conspiracy, or is that? After, two? yeah. So Grand Conspiracy and the Pearl's Gate, so. Oh, not okay. too far ahead. That's not mm -hmm. so bad. I thought Stormed Fortress was before Battles Get. Uh, it's Grand Conspiracy next for us, then uh, Perils Gate, then Traitors and Hot, and then Storm mm. Fortress. Okay. And then after Storm Fortress, just three more books, and then you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put it like that? <laughs> It's just like running a marathon, you know, and somebody says, yeah, after this first five, five miles, you've got another three miles, another small couple of two mile chunks after that, and then you've just another 15 miles at the end of that. Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting how you can add ornamentation about anything to make it sound easy or difficult or good or bad. Yeah. Um, also, and because I picked up... Uh, because I don't know where the rest of them are at this point, and I picked up some uh, used um, copies. You know, Varsha needs to join me in reading, you know, all of the Michelle West books. Yes, I do. I I mean, I want to. I have a bunch of series that, I don't know if I'll pick up Michelle West next year, but I want to do Hob after we finish what, and then I want to do Realm of the Eld Elder Links when we finish Wars of Light and Shadow. I don't want to pick it up. I might try that because I have those because that's like, oh, I like these covers. Um, mm. But I've only ever read the first three of the Assassin mm. trilogy. And that mm. was ages ago. Mm. So I have all these others and I'm like, yeah, I need to read these. But I'm like, ah, I'll get to it. And I Because like, I remember reading the, the Assassin trilogy and I'm like, oh my god, this is so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's on my list, but I don't know how she rates on difficulty level, but apparently at least emotionally it takes a lot out of you. So I only want one thing like that going at a time. So Wars of Light and Shadow. Uh, I don't know about difficulty. I'm I'm I've come to realize that mine is messed up because I was reading, you know, um Jenny and you know, stuff at like fifteen. So yeah. mm. <laughs> um, and uh, the Hob stuff I read right around the time they like, you know came out too. So I'm like, so my 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 metric for that is like I don't know. It's like was this <laughs> difficult when I read it? No. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I just I was kind of got to the end of the year. I was looking at many books I read, which is it's hard hard to say because I was doing a lot of, a lot of uh, graphic novels and stuff, but about fifty. And then you look at the 50 books that you read and you went, that was the wrong 50 books. I should have read this set of books instead or, you know, that kind of never an ending quest of you think, God, 50 books. I've made way through loads of series mm. and I've done, made great progress in a lot of things. And then you look at it and go, but it didn't. I've like inched forward the most meager amount in like the <laughs> amount of stuff that I want to read. I think it's that possible. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got, I'm also thinking about clearing off some of my shelves because, like, I've had stuff on here that I'm like, I wonder, you know, that I was like, wanted to get on my, re you know, reading list, and then I'm like, 
and then it's just sat there and i'm like i have no interest i'm like why do i have this here <laughs> yeah i know that feeling because one day you'll be struck with inspiration going why did i throw that one book out why did i not keep that because that's perfect for my mood right now maybe yeah some of them i got because it's like oh i like the cover of this and you know whatnot and then I, some of it was word of mouth but like like um uh what's his name gwen oh yeah John gwen. yeah um I, I i like the um the you know hunger of the gods and the shadow of the gods those two mm -hmm. still waiting on the third one for that yep yep yeah. uh, but i've also got the um that quartet you know got those but i just haven't gotten around to reading them you know yeah me neither and then i've got like three abercrombie but I don't understand the Abercrombie, so I'm like, can I read these without reading all these others? I don't know. Uh, oh, you have the second trilogy? Uh, I've got the um, Wisdom of Crowds, Red mm -hmm. Country, uh, Heroes. It's not something like that, yeah. Yeah. White it's covers, definitely. you know, with like red, blue. Last Argument of Kings or something like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yes. yes, yes. <clears throat> the one that's set in the future from the original trilogy, I guess. I haven't read any Abercrombie either. Well, I have read his, uh, what is classified as YA trilogy, but I haven't read the, I forgot what it's called. The Bounding. Yeah, people no. are like, oh, he's, you know, grim dark. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know why I got these other than like the covers and. <laughs> I mean, I know what you mean, Josh. <laughs> Except, I didn't press that button. <laughs> for those, uh, I keep forgetting. For those listening, uh, the comment that said, "I hate Steve. Glad he's gone." So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've you've uh, you've interpreted that a little bit, Steve. It just says, "I can't stand Steve." It didn't say okay. "hate" anywhere in there, but no. you heard. Yeah, that was fine. <laughs> put two and two together uh, what, what did i miss uh actually no he doesn't say that he can't stand steve oh i can't he stand i can't stand oh <laughs> <Come on>. <laughs> <laughs> punctuation is important <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is such a good visual joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. I can't stand comma Steve. Period. Glad he's gone. <laughs> dot dot dot. Smiley face. Yeah, it doesn't work as well on audio, does it? But... <laughs> yeah, like you didn't mean it, Josh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what was the the magazine cover that someone was on the cover of, and it was like someone cooks dogs or what was it it was like marie claire it was somebody like some cook i'll, I'll find it mm -hmm. but it was a punctuation error where it was like it should right. should have been a period but it was a comma and it was like so and so eats and then it was like i don't know for you it was funny, <laughs> I'll find it. oh yeah i think it's about four hours more actually i already covered my reading earlier in the conversation Mm. And I'm not going to go through that embarrassment again. It's usually a, a, a what you're avoiding reading at the moment, isn't it, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still not reading um, the darkness that came before. Not before. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you both. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I, you know, I have written in my in my defence, I have written 13 short stories and half a novel. I mean, you have an excuse. Way to make me feel bad. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I've listened. I've actually listened to more of the book that Varsha ordered me to listen to. Oh, nice! I have to. I I am yet to finish a restaurant, the restaurant at the end of the universe. But when I do, that's the audiobook I'm picking up next. Oh. For um, it's called Murder, Murder Your Employers. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's narrated by Simon Vance, and it the sample I listened to was hilarious. How are you liking it so far, Alex? It's actually quite good. It's I didn't. I wasn't sure because it didn't feel like it was my usual type of 
mm. um, setting, but I'm enjoying it so far. I think I'm on about chapter two or three of that. Oh, nice. Nice. I've got to, yeah. Simon Rand does comedy really, really well, as does Stephen Fry. He He's done a few PG Woodhouse, which I've who got, also I'm a fan of. I have um, listened to the PG Woodhouse collection read by Stephen Fry. Oh, yeah. I, I listened to Summer Lightning. I, I'm working my way through that collection. I think, I don't know if Vance has a whole collection or... He's just done several disjointed Woodhouse books, but the ones I did listen to, he he's done them brilliantly. I, th I think it for comedy, you need good timing and stuff. The new Discworld audiobooks are great too. If yes. Any, yeah. I'm enjoying, um, oh, I've forgotten his name now, the one that's doing the Guards books. Guards? Oh, um, I, don't, I don't remember those. He's, he's an impressionist. He used to be in a program called Dead Ringers in the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember his name at all. But My, he's very good. Nice. I've, I, I think I'm two books away from the first Night Watch. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Watch. City Watch. City Watch mm. books. Um, but Indra Varma's fav my favourite. John, John Colshaw is the guy. Yeah. That's mm. it. But yeah, um, Indra Varma does the... Is, has done the whole witches collection yeah. and she's oh, brilliant very good. she's brilliant ah oh, she's so good i listened to secret garden which she narrated oh she was so good and i also listened to the first witches book <laughs> and she was in game of frames which just makes yes, it even better <laughs> and, and lufa lufa <laughs> so there's a there's kind of a uh, there's some traction about George R. R. Martin having, or at least having like an idea when the, the next book is going to be released. And supposedly there's people that say that the the ending of his book, at least what he gave to the Game of Thrones producers, has been leaked. Um, so I guess the first question is, if you, what any of you want to know? Um, and do you think that's true? Because I think it's out there and I don't want to know. Do you think he would stick to it even like he must have multiple endings planned? He must he have had an to have idea. It, right? Yeah. He had to have changed it after the TV show. Um, I would imagine if it was anything close to what the TV show did, he's probably yeah. like, fuck that. Like I'm doing this. Let's go, let's go another path indeed. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'd say the the fact that his books have to be good and surprising and well received. Like one of the things about Game of Thrones is, is book series, never mind anything else, is that it was constantly surprising. So the one thing you can't have is a predictable sort of through path of it. You know, he has to do something else aside from it. So he, he's probably going to have to change it a couple of times, I would say, before he gets it out. But the way to get around it is by releasing the damn books or writing the books. You know, that might be a good way to, to, to cut a lot of this off at, at the pass. I'm still in the um, uh, uh, firmly in the of the stance that you know, just based on one of his last things he said, where he's still working on it, where he, you know, that I'm pretty sure he decided to scrap everything that he had and start over because mm -hmm. he said something and it just sounded like he's, you know, he had just. So anybody who's still hoping for that book next year, I'm like, yeah, that book is not coming out next year. If we're coming out next year, we would already know. That's true. They start the promotion for it already, indeed. The thing uh, that worries me is there's been so many theories and possible endings, even just while people were watching the show. That's right. That in order to come up with anything different, he's got a monumental task on his hands to come up with something that nobody out there has gone, oh, wait a minute, wouldn't this be a great ending? Yeah, and it's also too possible, you know, like he gave that he gave the, you know, his original ending away with the TV series and they just and then he saw how it was received and now he's like desperately scrambling to, you know, not do any of that because yeah, that last season everybody's like, "Wait, what just happened?" 
Now he's trying to work out how he can get Jamie Lannister and Jon Snow to marry and oh. form a coalition army. I mean, I'm on board with that. Totally on board. It would be different. Although Jamie's now t- I've just said it, it's somebody it's out there, and uh, yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm not sure someone's going to defend Nick all about that, and it probably involves yeah. It probably involves Jon Snow and Jamie Lannister actually getting married. Yeah, it probably does. So I have a question. I haven't, I haven't finished reading the series, and I'm only two books in, and I haven't watched the TV shows at all. But is the ending the only thing that everybody wants to know how it all ends? Um, I'm given to understand there's a lot of like loose ends, and there are many plot threads. It must be at a certain place we need to go from there i mean i guess is it a what happens now question or is it how does it all end is that the question that everybody's more interested in um well the the series what is it season five roughly corresponds to um how the last book ended Mm -hmm. as i recall um and that's the last, or whichever was the last book that went out. But um, there's certain things that don't happen in the series that, you know, are in the books that, you know, are in the you know, post season five. Um, but anything after season five is not in the books because it's all, you know, they're just working over whatever outline he gave them. Uh, and so it's, you know, wanting to see what everything that happens after that. Um, but yeah, the like for one of the characters, the last moment of her in season five is the exact same, pretty much the exact same way it ends, you know, for her in the book, the last book. Um, but then they introduce this other plot thread, which I'm not going to tell you what it is since you're not there. But I, I think a lot of people were not happy about that plot thread, mm-hmm. um, and they don't introduce that in the in the. Um, in the TV show at all, so. Hmm. So I guess maybe a combination of both. They want to see, you know, what happens past the book, you know, plus how it all ends. I don't know. Hmm. I, I was not a fan of the last book, so. Hmm. I guess, I guess if, let me ask the question a different way. If all you ever got not was, wasn't the books, but just how it ends, would that be sufficient to make everybody happy who's waiting on the story? Or would you want to know how you got there from wherever you left off at the end of book five or season five or wherever? Uh, I'd want to know how they got there, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if I were still reading them, I don't know about anyone part, else. Part of my problem with it, I read the first one not long after it came out. Mm. And then I've waited... 20 years, it it must be 20, almost 20 years, it feels like it, to get to this point. I haven't even read the last two-part book that came out, because he split book five into two. I haven't even read that because it took him so long to release that, I forgot what happened in book four, and the TV series came out, and then it all got mixed up with the TV series, so now I'd have to go back and start again read books one to four then read five and then wait another potentially six years for book six to come out <laughs> there's like i spent yeah. most of my life waiting for this series it sounds like you're in <laughs> yeah because uh, yeah i read yeah that's, that's what i did i was like i got the first one i was like oh this cover looks neat let me give it a try i was like oh it was pretty good and then i tried the other two but and then the fourth, and then the fifth. But at the fifth, I was like, "Yep, yeah, no, I'm done." Just between how it ended and you know the increasingly longer time between books, and I was just like, "Nope, I'm not interested." So then I followed the TV series for a while, which uh, as it got further on, it became more of it's like, "Hey, this is cool to see how this all plays out," but it was also like, "Yeah, they're just." The showrunners are just completely off the rails. Hmm. Um, 
it's fun to watch because it was a crazy spectacle. But sometimes you're like, really? Did they just do that? My favorite part is the some of the cast, and I don't want to direct you know, like ruin anybody on the show, but there's the video clip where they're doing the rehearsal reading for just sitting around the table for the final episode. And you watch some of the cast, like Amelia Clark and whatnot, just physically cringing at what they're doing because of, you know, how the episode and the, what the writers and the showrunners decided to do with it. And they're just like, she just at one point sits there with this cringy look and looks over at someone else on the stage or on the uh, table and then just sort of slumps down in her chair trying to hide because, yeah, you know, some of them looking pissed off. They're just like, why, why did they do this? Um, but it's really fascinating though because it's like the show was so popular and then the last season just like completely destroyed any you know of its influence or whatnot and it's just like no one talks about it though like, we don't want to talk about that anymore yeah we'll talk about the other the new show but yeah season the last season was yeah i don't know what they were doing there but it was bad Sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> but has the dragons coming back? Series two? Sight? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the first one. I was waiting to finish reading the books. So I haven't seen the show either. I'll get there in a few years. I kind of wish I didn't, I didn't watch the show because I, I tried to read the books and I just couldn't get into them because i just it's they're so close to the books that it's like you're just rewatching. i might as well just rewatch yeah. the tv yeah. show um i think i only got to book three i think but it was pretty damn close i was in, i was impressed with how how close a lot of the events were to the show yeah it's season five is when they after season five where it, you know where it splits hmm. um well that that bit that bit's hard <laughs> We were talking earlier on. I've started reading um, the Arrival story mm -hmm. uh, from Ted Chiang, and it's so hard to read that and not see Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner, and all that. Kind of, it's hard not to see that setup. And actually, I think the book there's a lot of things that are slightly different about it, but I can't unsee it. Like it's just it's, mm -hmm. it's one of those things. <laughs> just can't replace it. The alien. Uh, have you gotten to the part where they describe the aliens and does it yes. match the movie, the descriptions? Not really, no. Well, okay. Especially because in, in the movie, they do their best to not show them, if you know what I mean, if that mm. makes sense. Whereas this is, like the, the short story is not that long, obviously, but they're very quick about describing them um, mm. as tetrapods I see. Uh, in, 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 in the book. Um, but even the setting and how quickly that all comes together, you see how much... Uh, exposition the movie puts in and you, but you can't help think that is actually what happened in this version of the story as well even though it's not there mm. you know what I mean but uh, but it has it's an interesting frame and a narrative about how the thing's set up which I think is quite interesting especially when you consider what happened in the movie and all the stuff at the end so I think it is an interesting um, an interesting experiment to, to go through and read as for a story that you sort of know or at least the framework you know yeah yeah and it's kind of nicer, nice, I suppose, that it's a short story. I normally really dislike if there is a movie based on a book that I want to read. I always wait until I've read the book because it's mm. so much harder to pick up a book for a movie or show that I've already watched than it is to just go watch um, the movie. right? Because it's, it takes <laughs> a lot less mental effort to just watch as opposed to read. Um, TV shows, I guess, take the same amount of time, more or less, but movies, I definitely wait until I've read the book. I think a similar sort of, I think a similar sort of thing would be true with trying to read Foundation now, because they changed an awful lot of the framing device of, of the TV show versus the book, that I think it would be almost impossible to read the book now. Mm. Having seen how they split up and made it filmable, um, I see. In a lot of ways, I, I think that would be quite difficult to do. But maybe maybe it's it's a, it's an absolute dream. Hmm. Yeah, 
if there's enough of a gap, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to watch the show, but I don't remember the book. That might be good. Hmm. I need I, I, to get... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, two people. Sorry. I was going to say, I just on subject of things to read. I need to get back to reading these. Oh, yeah. How, how are you liking the... Oh, what's yes. it called? The Dave About trilogy. Dave About, um, I really enjoyed the first one. I have Kingdom of Copper and Empire of Gold and the uh, novella, I think it was, that she did. Um, sure. Plus the uh, adventures of Amina al Sarafi, which takes place somewhere in this universe. Mm -hmm. um, I really need to, you know, get around to starting uh, Kingdom of Copper, though. So I'm like, I keep meaning to do that. And they're ones I'm like, I've heard really good things about them. So I'm like, I need to read the rest of this. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't finish talking about Michelle Sagara when I said, mm. oh, Michelle West when I was when I <laughs> said I want to read Hob after what. But yeah, I do want, I like that her work is broken up into multiple smaller series, which I suppose you could say for Hob as well. But yeah, mid next year, I'd like to pick up her books. 2026 reading plans, Varsha, this is the way it goes. <laughs> yeah, it's kind yeah. of sad. I'm like, I, would, I make a list of books that I shortlist for the next year. I do that towards the end of or I have been doing that the last couple of years. And then I list 50 series. Like I tend to read 50 books a year. So unless I start all of these and then completely lose track of everything, yeah. I'm not getting through this. So I have to shortlist and shortlist and shortlist. And then it becomes a depressing list of three series or something that I get to read. <laughs> but, you, but you also pick series that are not like traditional fantasy series, which are like three books long. You yeah, tend to pick series that are 13, 15, 17, you know, whatever. Things that aren't yeah. finished yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I can afford to have one or at most two of those going at a time. Um, like, I think the next one also that I'm considering is uh, Shadows of the Apt. Is that what that's called? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's also yeah. 10 books long. But, but I loved Guns of the Dawn. And I think I um, might be a fan of Tchaikovsky's work in general. So I do want to read that series. I did. My first Tchaikovsky was um, the memory ones, Children of Memory and yep. Children mm. of Time or whatever, um, which I didn't I haven't read the third one. But um, I really liked, you know, I think I liked the second one better than the first. But I, I did feel like for those that they were kind of samey, you know. Mm -hmm. a little bit um and i started shadows of the app i read the first one which i really liked but the second one over here to you know, start on at some point um and i'm definitely going to keep through on that one uh mm -hmm. at some point i need to read the last two um of the uh, malazan mm -hmm. I, I i've i read all the way through um uh, the hounds. Uh, yes, and then um, because that was everything that my friend had, and you know, Dust of Dreams and Crippled God. When the Crippled God was out, when I um, uh, when he loaned them to me, but uh, I've got a humble bundle, so I got all the ebooks. Oh, yeah. But you know, of them now, um, and though actually, I, I I I'm kind of like some of the Esselmont stuff that he's got actually seems to interest me more. Um, because I still was like with Malaza, and I was like, "What is going on?" Mm -hmm. You know, half the time because it was just all over. Felt like it was all over the place to me. So nice. My seventy-seven-year-old mum has just finished the first Malaza book mm. in less time than it's taken me to read chapter one of the Darkness that comes before. <laughs> so. You know, I'm being shown up by my mum as well. Um, you can still catch up to us, Alex. We're not that far ahead. Um, really on book two. <laughs> I've been reading it for six months, Steve. Uh, you know, it could, it could be a, a New Year thing. Uh, but we're taking a pretty relaxed pace, though. So. What What you need is for to be, like, disappointed in you. It's a very great motivator for me. 
<laughs> the, the 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 feeling that I might let Varsha down is the bit that keeps me reading, and I have a very pretty good clip. A lot of those things. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I genuinely mean that in a positive way. Like it's like, okay. uh, in a in a, in a less in a more serious view, like having the conversations to talk about the books is is a good um is a good way to kind of keep myself kind of always in, in the back of my head going, oh, I should knock out another 50 pages or something in this even when i'm not reading yeah yeah that that definitely helps so i uh am what i guess booktube terms mood reader uh but but having a discussion uh, to look forward to i can read anything apparently so that's nice so yeah i, I see what you mean <laughs> Helps out. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, so part of my lack of reading comes from the fact that it's winter, and I mm. don't go fishing in winter because it's too bloody cold, and I'm too too old to go fishing in the cold now. <laughs> and you know that's eight hours on a Sunday where I can sit there with an audio book. Mm. Doesn't you know, most of the time catching fish is irrelevant. This is going, <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> It's just a quiet time. Do you fish? Whenever you say that you're fishing, Alex, and your weekend plans in that uh, thread we have on the forum, I always picture you in a boat in the middle of a lake somewhere. Is that picture accurate, no, or I, are you I, on the shore? I'm on the bank. <laughs> okay. On a nice, comfy chair, which <laughs> reclines. Yeah. You're you're sort of making it sound like in the summer we have this such glorious weather in Britain that uh, <laughs> <laughs> we it's, have such enough, a, it's such a difference from winter. We have enough days, and when it rains, <laughs> it's usually warm at least. So oh, I can put up my enormous umbrella and just camp out under that. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Steve's summer, for instance. One ten, one o five. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. That's not fun. That's insane. Yeah, there's some hot days. It's only a couple of months, so it's not too bad. It's in the 50s now, 40s and 50s for the day, so it's not too bad. A couple of months, it's only a couple of days. <laughs> we, we had sunshine for three days in a row this year. It was amazing, but it's <laughs> such a party. <laughs> <laughs> three days in a row. I used to be able to say that about Seattle, but I feel like we get a lot more sun now. Hmm. I don't know if this is the same in where you are, uh, Alex, but certainly here, as soon as the weather turns warmer, and I mean turns from like 10, 11 to 14, 15, the vest tops are out everywhere. It's like, yeah. uh, honestly, it, it's like as soon as there's even the slight touch of like warmth in the air that you might not die of hypothermia, it's like shorts, vest tops. Everybody's out like it's the middle, like it's forty degrees. It's like yeah, like sudden, sudden rush on um, ice lollies in the supermarket. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a shortage, just complete another shortage of ice and ice lollies, and uh, yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> Some of you about Seattle too. <laughs> <laughs> Try some portable air conditioning units, rockets up. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. And then three days later, we're back to complaining about the rain. <laughs> so, someone visited us uh, from Arizona in like mm -hmm. a teammate from Arizona visited us. I think it was springtime, just about summer. And we took him to a lake nearby <laughs> and people were jumping into the water <laughs> and going <laughs> crazy. <laughs> He's like, wow, you guys probably don't get a lot of sun around here. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Because it wasn't even that sunny of a day. It was just mildly sunshiny and the weather was still, and the temperature was still pretty low. So, yeah. <laughs> I like go and get the people from like Arizona and California that show up around here in the Pacific Northwest, you know, during the spring. And they'll all show up and they'll just be bundled in heavy coats and scarves while the people <laughs> who live here are just walking around in shorts. Well, I am, but, you know, <laughs> out here doesn't get particularly cold. Mm -hmm. uh, for what I'm used to, so I'm like, oh, it's 40 degrees, I can wear shorts. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not sure what temperature it is at the moment, because 
my computer's decided not to tell me for once. You're gonna have to go outside. What? It's <laughs> what time is it? It's five to twelve. Hmm. So that's still evening, just about. Hmm. And I'm seriously considering taking this top off because I'm too hot. <laughs> <laughs> We need some some music, some techno music to play. <laughs> no, right. Yep. Temperature tomorrow between one and nine degrees, so that's freezing to about mm. maybe about forty fifty something like that. That's tomorrow. Still quick. Uh, earlier with uh, with Joe, uh, JC, uh, and Burn. Currently... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Apparently it's 11 degrees centigrade. Mm. I'm not... Oh, no, hang on. No, that's Saturday at 4pm. Why are you telling me Saturday <laughs> at 4pm? It's 4 degrees centigrade. Yes, that sounds a bit right. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, 30-something, maybe? Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Carl is here. Hey, Carl. Good evening. Hey, Carl. Oh, well, well, good to see you. Hey, Carl. Sort of swinging by. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit earlier, we were talking. 39. Yeah. Oh, I was close. Um, earlier, we were talking about the uh, with JC and Byrne and Paramita and Susanna. We were talking about the separation of uh, reviewers and authors. Mm. If there should be, or uh, kind of just like, um, and also kind of, you know, because previously in history, the Paramita was of the, of the opinion that the artist speaks to the review, to the person absorbing the art through the art, and that's their that's that's their way of communicating. And once the piece of art, whatever they create, is out of the world, that's no longer belongs to them. So they shouldn't reply or, or respond to a reviewer who has a negative or positive review. Should be no interaction. So, what are everyone's thoughts on reviewing and? the author's role, if any, to reviews. <laughs> Steve opening up Pandora's box. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun topic. I wanted to um, Yeah, I, I happen to have many strong opinions on the subject. <laughs> um, oh, I, I can go first if that's okay. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I think I can, I feel like saying that artists shouldn't respond to reviewers leads to dangerous territory where you can say whatever the heck you want and you expect that they won't respond i feel like at the very least you there should you shouldn't look um negatively upon an artist responding to misinterpretations of their work misreadings or misinterpretations of their work they, you should be allowed to respond to that and um but there is the other dangerous strategy where if an artist has a huge following, they can set reviewers, uh, they can set their audience <laughs> loose upon the reviewers intentionally or unintentionally. And that can lead to a lot of issues. But I've also seen the reverse happen where a reviewer with a, hu a bigger audience than the author did a lot of damage to a community so i i think I, I don't think it's either or it's dependent on the situation i think setting rules about the interactions makes it dangerous in a lot of ways for many people it... that's all <laughs> bite my tongue time I haven't, even, I haven't even been drinking. This is terrible. <laughs> okay. So what way they go this from? Okay. Let's look at this way. Tw <laughs> Twitter slash X. I know. I don't think people here do, in this group are engaging very much with it, but it, it has become, and I went on it earlier on to kind of flick through. It has become this weird Cess never ending cycle of, of promotion or like I can't I can't actually see a review anymore for this pushing of 
people's books, which is great in one way, but it's literally, I, I don't know what's criticism anymore. I don't know what view is at all. I, I don't see that space at all anymore. Uh, even people, things that started off with reviews become something else. Um, and like that idea that, like the scene, uh, quite a funny, I can't remember who it was, but it was somebody uh, was doing a skit on, on, on the internet or whatever, or somebody on the internet been asked for their opinion and uh, on something. And he says, oh, but what, what does everybody else think? And uh, he was like, oh, no, no, you're the first person. You're the first person to hear about this one. What the, your original opinion says, it couldn't possibly. Not until at least uh, 20 other people have sounded off on this on this thing. Can I actually give my opinion or something on the idea of reviews or whatever? Are not done in a vacuum either way. Uh, they, should, they ideally should be separate spaces from anything else. But they, the two worlds are too closely linked now in terms of promotion, review, criticism of the review and then write write reply which is all all well and good but it just it just muddies the fact that there are no reviews anymore i just don't see any of them they just become either promotional pieces or <laughs> threads of conversation or something and i don't know like i said before i kind of don't read any of them anymore because mm -hmm. like what are they sorry not sorry <laughs> no, I, I agree. I think... I think some um, some reviewers, and um, this isn't a slight on anyone, because I I know I found myself doing the same thing. Um, you become like a cheerleader for an author or for a series, and it's not a critical analysis or a, an objective analysis. It's I really love this and I want everyone to read it because I really enjoyed it. So I, I think yeah. the intentions are good, but I think a lot of reviewers become cheerleaders and become. Like the flavor flavor of the author, like the like the hype the hype person, you know, to to hype up their work, which is fine. It's not a criticism, but I think it's there's a difference between promoting and reviewing. And yeah. I'm not a reviewer. I'm not so I completely I, I'm I come to this saying like I'm more of a I I don't I'm I'm just not I'm not good enough to do to be a, a reviewer in most people's uh, by most people's standard, but I just mean, if if you are more of a cheerleader, then just say I really love this and you should read it too, instead of instead of presenting it like a like a critical analysis because it's not. So I think there's a a weird thing there. It's just very difficult. Like I totally agree. That it's not to throw shade at anybody that 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 is falls into any of those camps camps because that was never really the intention to start with. It's just it becomes all noise you know and it becomes very hard to distinguish what is what is what if that makes sense i feel very called out no i do it too <laughs> I, I, I do we it all too. we all do it like this yeah, this I, is this I, is the I truth admit, yeah i freely admit i do it for all of my favorite stuff yeah yeah because i'm like oh yeah because i'm probably the most vocal on twitter i guess about you know an author so no, I think I, I'm referring more to someone who there's people who um, who don't promote necessarily one series, but just promote people in general, which is fine. And we need those people to do that to get the help to the word out. There's not a not a not being critical of anyone. I just think if if you are like the hype person for like indie authors or fantasy authors, that's cool. But just there's I think there's there's a difference between being a critical reviewer and conveying your thoughts and conveying you know like what you thought about something versus this person is great you should read their book and when that's all it is it's it kind of gets drowned out because no one really listens anymore um, and i think there's also some intersection there where you know with the you know gotta get more clicks you know gotta you know gotta promote my channel and whatnot and just they're just sort of driving for that instead of like, no, you just, I like this. This is great. Here's why I like it. You know, now read this, you know. Yeah. I'm kind of getting exasperated with BookTube in general. I don't know. I'm sort of feeling like, you know, it's like I want to support some of these people, but I feel like it just sort of, I don't know, has made my attempts to read worse. Because, you know, um, and I guess some of it might be just some more sort of the samey because, you know, you'll get a lot of people and they, you know, they all end up talking about the same things. 
on the same series series and you know and i'm like why you know and then they say all these great things about the series and you know or, or one series and then you're like well yeah and then you're you sit here if you're a fan of uh, another series and i'm not going to name any particular series here but i'm sure people know what i'm talking about and you're like yeah and everything you just said about that other series is in this one so why aren't you reading it um but you know it's the self-reinforcing of the the algorithm they're like if you try to deviate off of it you lose you know you lose uh, your know, people's attention and you know your numbers go down and you know gotta have those numbers go up sorry that's more general just more generalized grabbing for me sorry no I, I think it's the same i think we're all sort of making the same point Jimmy, which is the fact that it's hard to distinguish the noise from you know trying to find stuff that you want yourself you know what i mean if you're going out and you say god i want to find a book that's within this kind of the genre or whatever it's hard to distinguish and find out where that is even though in theory we have nothing but reviews we have nothing but critical content but it just sort of feels like it's all just one big uh mushroom of of noise that ends up being if you're going on twitter for instance just scroll scroll oh there's another book there's the, that same cover i've seen 20 times today um kind of going through and I, certainly i'm not reading any of that content now mm. granted i'm not engaging with twitter or x to the same extent that other people are but i i am literally just flying through all that stuff and not seeing it anymore because it all is just that one big mushroom of stuff rather than oh yeah in that oh, there's respect, that yeah, thing I yeah i follow a bunch of different authors and whatnot <laughs> and i'll see their stuff and it's just all sorts you know a lot of them will even like you know stylize their posts in the same way so just all sorts of bleeds together and i'm yeah. like okay and so like how, how do you find a good review in that or if there is a good review like I, i'm almost certainly never seeing it these days you know from there um, oh it's, it's not a review thing but you know the one i'm really starting to hate is when they'll they'll try to promote their book and they're like it's like you know uh this thing, this thing, and this thing. If you liked, you know, one of these things, and they just like combine like three different things. They're like, it's like Jane Austen meets zombies meets, you know, Highlander or whatever, you know. And, Sounds like and I'm book. like, I don't know about that, you know, things like that, where it's just like they're like, if you like Game of Thrones and Samurai, you'll like this. And I'm like, I don't think Samurai and Game of Thrones would you know, mesh very well, but don't let the George I, hear you say that. The one I keep seeing that I swear I will never do if I ever manage to publish a book is if this book and this book had a baby. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Kids are yeah, like, I, I did see one I liked. It was from the actual author of the book. Um, uh, Shirin Zhao, um, Iron Widow. Um, and, you know, someone's like, well, this is just like the, you know, the, you know, such and such anime. And she's like, well, yeah, I even say as much in the, you know, uh, acknowledgements that I wasn't happy with, you know, stuff that happened in the last half of that anime. So I wrote my own version of that kind of story, you know, to address, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, I felt was wrong with the show you know um you know because of you know giant robots and things and she's like wow this is like way heteronormative and you know stuff she wasn't happy with so she wrote went out to write her own story about giant robots Thanks. and apparently the show creators of the anime even you know got to read her book you know when it was translated into japanese so and they liked it so she's like mission accomplished i guess <laughs> That's but yeah, cool. they'll do like it's giant robots and you know school and you know you know warfare and I'm like okay, I can go watch Gundam for that. Nice. Yeah, it's it's difficult space. Like I, I don't know, I don't know what fixes it or otherwise. I just think that the social media tools that we have just include that the content comes out like this whether that's youtube whether it's twitter whether it's facebook or whatever it is it just comes out in this stream of what is essentially copy paste content in some ways well it might be different books or otherwise but actually the the words are the same the kind of groupings that you're saying you know this is 
the new Game of Thrones, for instance, like basically every book that was released for about the past 10 years has had that in the cover in some ways in some traditional published form. Like it's it's all the same thing. Or the, the one I really hate is the book covers that have the now major Netflix series. Oh yeah. my God. Can't can't buy that book. That, that, that version of the book can't be picked up. But uh, yeah, they're all they're in the same vehicle, the same machine, yeah. the same stuff. Yeah, I think part of it is too from a um, like for creators. Like I think they're incentivized to either be extremely negative or extremely positive. That's what gets because if you come out with a three star review or a, a lukewarm review of a popular book, no one's really going to care, right? I mean, some people will, but if you have a negative review, like you trash it or you come out and you gush about it, you're going to have more of a more of a response from something like. So I think people. I think creators also consider that too with and i'm not saying that's right or wrong it's just what it is um so you know it's it's this weird thing that's happening um my my work we do um my department does you know quality to make sure our people that are talking you know sound like you know human beings and not robots and you know try to you know coach them on Hey, we want you. We're an American-based company. We want you to sound, you know, like you're American because, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people are in the America, U.S. are not great about that, um, you know, and how they respond to, you know, anyone who doesn't sound American. Um, and we we recently did a change, just you know, with our quality things, where we took out scores, and so I'm like, we just need to take away the star ratings entirely you know if you can't actually share your thoughts about it don't then don't bother <laughs> you know because hmm. the star ratings you know they're just like oh yeah i'm gonna do one star two star three star it's like yeah that but that doesn't really tell you anything it's true <laughs> yeah <laughs> also read this book Oh, oh Cherry. Uh, Cherry. CJ Cherry. Yeah. There's another one to add to the list, Alex, of uh, books you can do a chapter and a bit of. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, 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 I am devoted to fighting recency bias. I am. I am so tired of it. I'm like, oh, look, there's new books coming out. It's like, that's great. And we got all these authors with all these books out, so many books out, and you know they're right up your alley, and you just don't know about them. Because you're only looking at things in the last ten years. Not saying anyone here is, but no, that's a thing. Even the last ten weeks, I think that's another thing. Is you know, you we, we focus on the new stuff, and it's like a new shiny thing. And there is a ton of great stuff out there that's been sitting around waiting for someone to pick it up. There's nothing more fun than starting a new project, and that whether that's a new series or otherwise, uh, you start it, and then you get a book and you go great. And then you realize you've committed to do the whole series or otherwise maybe it's just not quite as shiny and fun and new as it was which is why things like read long groups etc help propel you through that and kind of get through but doing that by yourself you have a tendency to kind of go oh I'll pick up the next book of that and next month and next month turns into next year turns into whatever because you're always kind of doing the the mood read of oh this thing this thing came in i should read this yeah like count of monte cristo <laughs> war and peace or war and peace indeed <laughs> stick, to, stick to my uh, three musketeers alexander dumas that, that one will do me for the for the moment oh is that are you reading that right now no i just i, I keep on flirting with the idea of doing a review i've read it before actually i read it many 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 mm. years ago but um i keep on floating with the idea of of rereading it because it, i do quite like uh three musketeers um i want to so the thing about a lot of these classics is that I had these abridged versions that I read when I was little and I've been wanting to go back and read the full versions and I just never got around to it and Count of Monte Cristo and Three Musketeers weren't even among my favorites but I have a feeling I'm going to really like them as an adult mm. so yeah but I'm, I'm glad I started Count of Monte Cristo I'm going to aim to finish it <laughs> we'll see One thing I've always been kind of proud of is even as a kid, if I picked up a book 
and it said abridged on it, I immediately put it back down again. Nice. Hmm. I kind of wish I'd done that, but I I don't think we had... At least I never saw them on any of the shelves, the full versions of the books. And I think I was little enough. The, the, the copies I had were these little square books with a picture on a side and then text on the other. That it was nice to read as a kid. Okay. I have to head out. Uh, oh, no. Congratulations again, Steve. But Thanks for coming see, first. Yeah. I'll yeah. see you guys again soon. And yeah. Congratulations on 100. Here's to 100 more. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Take care, Russia. The disruptor has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> the favorite disruptor. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I just think it's... Um, well, first, I'm still not convinced whether Parmeath was trolling us with War and Peace or not. I, I'm just not... I'm not sure if that was a troll job or if she's really wanting us to read it. But No, I think Parmeath wants us to, to read it. I just... So I'm still baffled over Paramita's um, responses to reading Berserk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm wondering if she actually read these. She's like, this is a feel good. I'm like, are you trolling us? I think you're trolling us. Yeah, she talked about it earlier. Uh, I think in hour one. She really loved it. Um, and she has a hangover. She said she flew through the 41 uh, volumes and She's, um, she said she really liked it, which, and then also propelled her to, um, a thousand and one books for the year. I don't know how she does it. I don't know either. <laughs> it's an incomprehensible number to me. I haven't even read a thousand and one words. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of I, words. I don't think I've read a thousand books in my life. Even like counting comic books and like single issues and stuff. I don't think I've no ever way. not come close to it. No. I'm fairly sure I have a thousand but, books. And that's like over you know four decades. So I just just slightly uh jealous. That's that's it. Parmeter's Parmeter's ability to consume that kind of Amount of words is uh, much many book series you could get through and be able to talk about and all that. That that, that sounds kind of cool. I think I've read maybe forty or fifty books the whole year, and I have trouble remembering all of them. I, can you imagine reading a thousand books in three hundred and sixty-five days? What can you? For me, I don't know. I, but I would remember what happened in ninety-nine percent of them. I. I was looking back at the 50 or so books that I did read this year and went, why those 50 books? <laughs> yeah, I hit something like, um, I think my official count on Goodreads was like 35, but I know it was more than that. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think you're onto something there. It's like, because, you know, some of the books she read were, you know, things I'd read as two. And I, I you know, but you know, she tried to talk about it. And, you know, I felt like it's like, okay, I think you're reading it but I don't know how well you're absorbing it, you know, kind of. And I don't want to disparage, but I was like, just kind of, it's like, okay, you read it, but did you internalize any of it? Or is it gone after five minutes? I don't know. So well, yeah, reading that many in a year is like, nope. Well, I think it's kind of like, I looked at like Alex spending, you know, how much time it takes to write a book and how much effort goes into it. And how much thought is put into it and all, all the work and blood and sweat and tears and years of thinking it out. And so it, in a way, I, I kind of feel bad when, I, when I'm when i rushing through something because like somebody put a lot of time into this. I should take my time and, and really try to like soak it in and like bathe in it and not just try to rush through it because someone spent a lot of time making this and I, you know, I want to kind of take it in. I mean, the first book I wrote, The Healer, which is the one you've read, Steve, mm -hmm. um, that took me, it's just over 100,000 words. It took me in total three years to write, self-edit, rewrite a bit, self-edit a bit more. And I thought after three years, what I'd come up with was 
you know, this amazing final article. I thought, my God, this is brilliant. I'll send it to a developmental editor just to make sure that the story tracks. She's not going to find much. So I sent it off to a developmental editor with a thousand pounds of my money. And she came back and said, yeah, the story hangs together quite well. Here's a 30 page document full of things you need to change. <laughs> oh, wow. Jeepers. <clears throat> well, she said, you should change in my opinion it's your book i can't make you change them but you've paid me the money so here's what i think you should do <laughs> that's what you paid me for that's before varsha's got all our our typos on it <laughs> yeah jeez to be so, fair yeah. like it, it, i just checked i've done 266 movies this year which is an wow. absurd amount of movies so everybody has can have their own little uh, their own little rabbit hole to go down. Like if I had taken the time that I watched the two hundred and sixty six movies and just read books with them, you know, that's a a lot more books probably as well. If I added up all the time I've spent on PS five and laptop gaming over the last mm. year, I probably could have read quite a few books. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. it comes down to gaming stuff i'm like i play one you know came up in one of our friday conversations you know the other week um i play a heavily story-based mmo so you know in the amount of time i spend on the story parts for it you know i'm in between those but i'll have another chunk coming up in january probably um but easily the whole story for it is like 300 hours of play time mm. And that's only if you like did it you know, constantly. And I'm like, you know, and so it's a really good story, but you know, it's also a lot of time investment. Plus, you're doing other stuff, and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do the story right now. Uh, but yeah, that PS5 Switch, you know, um, random games of Tetris that I open up in my browser when I'm bored at work, mm. um. Or time spent playing with Transformers because I'm like tinkering with them. But I, I don't know. I think this year I'm going to try to read more books and I'm just going to like pick things up off my shelf and, you know, not try to like make a list or something. I'm just like, I'm just going to pick up and read whatever I want. I think the worst game, I say, I think I know that the worst game for me, um, because it was the only game that the little group I usually play online with. It's the only game we could all agree on. I've got some like 1,700 hours clocked in playing Overwatch. Oh, wow. And it's just because it's the only game we could all agree on. Agree on, yeah. Hmm. I haven't looked at what my playtime is um, for Final Fantasy XIV, um, but I know before I abandoned it because I couldn't stand, you know, not because of a story or anything, I just played with some people I knew um, I had put a ridiculous amount of time into World of Warcraft mm. and yeah, I'm just you know, looking back at it now it's like man that was time I could have spent doing just about anything else <laughs> and you know I didn't even have the advantage of you know 14 and having a really good story to you know mm -hmm. justify because it, it's just like World of Warcraft story is mostly garbage yeah mm. go to play know. some map I don't know how long it took me, but I platinumed Skyrim and Oblivion. So I basically played them until I've got every achievement. Wow. Good games, though. Very good oh, games. Oh, they're brilliant games. I've just downloaded, I actually downloaded Oblivion on my laptop because I haven't got a console to play it on anymore. Because um, I had that on the Xbox 360. Mm hmm. And it was only three pound ninety nine on Steam for the Game of the Year edition, so I figured I'd download that. And um, yeah, Progress. I'm trying not to play it all the time. It's a great game, though. Yeah, yeah. great game. Uh, Skyrim keeps adding things to it. They keep there's like new stuff on Skyrim yeah. all the time. Yeah, shop nice. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll probably go back to playing a couple of hours of Dota this weekend, as usual. 
I think we will hit six thousand something hours this year. Jeez, it's twelve years though. That's not too bad, I guess. Um, yeah, that's uh, the average. Average that I like. Twenty twelve, I started playing it. That's it's still the bulk of majority of time that I spend. And a bit like you were saying there, Alex, you know, about Overwatch, it's become a social thing. It's a social thing of getting on and, and spending time with people rather than necessarily about the game itself, even though the game is fun. I worry much more about playing games that I objectively, critically go and this is poor. <laughs> Why am I playing this game still? Like I was playing a bit of uh, Ghostwire Tokyo earlier on. It handles like an absolute, the combat's terrible. Uh, uh, the story's sort of interesting, but I'm like, Here's another 10 hours. I have sunk into this game and it's objectively not very good. I had so much hope for that game. Mm -hmm. I thought, here we go. We've got a new Bioshock. Yeah. And it's just not. It just doesn't handle well enough to be a top tier game or anything. It's just, but there are interesting ideas and it's story beats, etc. cetera. Uh, but I worry much more about the 10 hours that I put into that than the nearly 6,000 hours that I put into a game that I log on, play with friends, occasionally argue with them, fall out with them for 24 hours, come back on, and then all's forgiven. You know, it's fine. Yeah, I think online gaming, it changed that too because it became more about the social aspect rather than yeah, the game, sure. you know, just so, like an excuse to hang out. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. All of my remaining real-life friends are people that i game with socially yeah they just happen to not live that far away from me so we all meet up every now and then for things like birthdays and stuff it's a novel 2023 concept of real life friends i tell you. Yeah. you got me there <laughs> yeah um also earlier um now that we're, I was thinking about the reviewer and reviewer and author mm -hmm. separation relationship is also, uh, Joe had mentioned that if, for instance, if you, if you know, you don't enjoy YA for you to pick up, knowingly pick up a YA book and then write it, write a negative one-star review because the book is YA, is that something that you should do as a reader? The whole question baffled me because if I know I don't like YA, I'm not going to pick no, it up I in the first it. place. I'm just not going to do it. Maybe it's something that a reviewer would do because they would go, well, I'll give it another go because no, yeah. I didn't like that one, but I might like this one. But I don't have the same drive to read every book under the sun. So I just sort of wouldn't bother picking it up in the first place because I know I'm not going to enjoy it or I waste my time on it. Yeah. Hell of a star ratings. I mean, this is this, the very crux of star ratings. Star ratings aren't, don't come out of a vacuum. So your predisposition to a genre or to a character style or even to how something's written will influence what your score of a book will be compared to the next person so at that point what, what's the point what's the point of even putting a star rating on it um we have far better ways of doing it which in theory should be words but again we don't really give ourselves the opportunity to look at words or mm -hmm. look at sort of you know qualitative uh, descriptions of things rather than Boil it down to this is a three out of five or a four out of five or a one out of five. Divided up into easily digestible bites. You know, <laughs> can't be bothered to read something. I ain't got time for that. I got to go back and look at the cat pictures. Yeah. It's true. Um, also, and I'll just say that I, I really just kind of hate YA as a genre in general on the label, you know, as a label because I don't know. It's like it. I don't know the why is it exists right now just sort of sprang up but it's like when I started reading fantasy and you know whatnot you know there really wasn't you know there wasn't really a genre it or whatever and it's like and so I see all these new YA books and they all feel kind of samey to me I'm mm -hmm. like okay so this is all all this kind of the same thing and 
you know, when I get something that is, you know, you know, you could tell if something was aimed at, you know, a younger audience, but, you know, you know, there wasn't like the stigma around it or anything. It's just like, it was just written. It's like, I guess people would kind of shove, you know, like, I don't know, Susan Cooper's, um, the dark is rising sequence into, you know, YA now, or, um, her Diane Dwayne's, you know, young wizards. And I'm like, but I don't really feel like either of those are young adult, you know, as the genre defines itself now. So I just kind of hate the label. Hmm. Coming at it from the other side of the argument, as a writer, I would want as many people as possible to pick up and read my book because obviously the work would be so great, it would convert them all to loving my book. Plus, I'd be able to buy that extra ivory back scratcher I've always wanted. See, there's always two sides to every argument. <laughs> there is. <laughs> <laughs> you see, with ivory back scratcher, you should do what the um, uh, the guys who made the you know card game Cards Against Humanity, what mm -hmm. they did one year or for a couple of years. They're like, we're raising money for Christmas presents, and you know, and they're like, here and here's how you can help us do that. And they they you know uh, put up where you could basically donate, and they just outright told them that all you're getting is an empty box. And hmm. you know, and we're going to spend all this money to buy presents, and people just ate it up. And then they you know, we will categorize everything we bought, and then they bought some weird stuff. Like, hmm. but people just ate it up. They're like, yeah, you. So it's like you can literally. That's the crazy thing. You literally go on the internet and say, like, I need to go fund me to buy my ivory brack scratcher, and you will, pr you know, you can probably find people who will be like, oh, okay. That's a scary thought, but people are so yeah. willing to just part with money for nothing. Yeah, but I mean, and some people probably do it because they think it's funny, you know, because uh, uh, the cards you can see on me, they're like, we're, we're going to send you a box with, you know, uh, the smell of poop in it or something. I don't remember what it was, but it was something stupid. And, you know, some people are like, oh, OK, that's funny. I'll, I'll, I'll do that because I thought it was funny. But they're, you know, they were clear and then some people complained and like, and the Cards Against Humanity people were like, we told you, you weren't getting anything. We were <laughs> explicitly clear about that. I like the thing on eBay when the, was it like PS4 was really, or PS3 or whichever one it was. People were Oh yeah, the people who, the, the scammers on eBay are like, yeah, we're going to sell you the box. And they the try box. to word it in such a way to... You know, yeah. make you think you're actually getting it, but mm. you're just getting an empty box. They were doing that on Amazon with the PS5 as well. Because wow. yeah. I remember reading one and thinking, but that's just a box. How is Amazon allowing this? It's really strange the way that Amazon's changed because it, it's now you have sellers that sell on Amazon and the the... I think there was a certain bar that Amazon had before that just isn't there anymore with these uh, third-party sellers. It's become something else um, that yeah. you're really careful with what you order now. Um, but. Like, I could see an instance, you know, if you're selling a box of something, you know, you know, like it's just an empty box, and if you're just upfront about it, because you know there are people who will want to be like, well, I'm, you know, I want to, you know, I have an original PlayStation, but I don't have the box anymore, and they'll go on eBay looking for the box, yeah. and you could be like, sell your original, you know, PS2 box, you know, like my friend, you know, getting stuff out of storage, you know, I have a original P, a slim PS2, complete with this box and everything, and so I was like, yeah, I could just like put that up on eBay. You'd probably just put the box up and someone would snatch it up because they want to have a box for their PS2. <laughs> well, you know, there's a sensible option of I'm moving house and I need some boxes. So I went on to mm -hmm. Amazon and bought what is it, a stack of 15 unmade boxes and some parcel tape. Job done. Yep. Yep. 
I still need I needed again. every box I could scrounge up because, as I mentioned earlier, mm. I have definitely got over a thousand books. Wow. But not read ever, them. Not read <laughs> all of them, no. <laughs> if I ever unpack them, I will have a library. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we've only been here three years almost so you know we haven't you wouldn't expect us to unpack the spare room yet but again once once the uh, become the famous author and you know time magazine are doing the tour of the house you know you'll you'll have to have all of the books out then you know to be yeah or obviously i'll have to show that i'm educated in literature <laughs> <laughs> yeah get yourself the entire like loft space and put bookshelves and just line the walls with it yep be really fancy and get one of those rolling ladders. Oh, that would be brilliant. That's the dream. That is yeah. the dream. You just swing along. You, can, you, 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 can, you reenact from you know, Beauty and the Beast. We just get on the ladder and just roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Beauty and Beast is the height of literary, uh, literary over the top. You know, capitalism. You know, imagine being well. Just like I mean, in the basement. look at the library he had that he just like here. You can have my whole library, and he yeah. had a huge library. I'm like, I want that library. Hmm. Oh, dear, buddy. Yeah. Well, guys, I think uh, we're hitting on five and a half hours. <laughs> You're hitting five and a half hours. Uh, Alex is hitting five and a half hours as well. Actually, Alex too. Yeah, Alex has been hanging out like the whole time. Right? I've just been here an hour and a half. That's it. No, that you came before that. Uh, came in just before three. So oh. easy, yeah. easy. <laughs> big achievement, big achievement though, Steve. A hundred, hundred episodes of. Yeah. Yes. That's a lot. It's a lot of it. It's a lot of episodes. Um, yeah. yeah, it's been fun. I think um, about two years. About two years. Wow. I think. Did you think I, you'd hit a hundred episodes when you started? No. <laughs> no. I don't even think about it. I just thought like week to week and you know, just see what happens. But when I hit fifty, it's like maybe, maybe, maybe. But it's it's the dumb ideas when you hit a milestone. You're like, I've got to do something big. Yeah, and you do there's something big, and you realize I ha you wake up tomorrow, Steve, and you'll be like, I can't speak. My no. voice is gone. Why? <laughs> no, thankfully, there's lots of great people who like to talk, so I don't have to speak too much. <laughs> so I'm good. No, was, I wanted to do something fun, um, and have a, have a chance for everyone in different time zones to come because yeah, it's hard for nice. certain time zones to join. So I just thought we'll do like a like a you know, different blocks and then hopefully everyone can, whoever wants to join can and just kind of hang out and talk shit. <laughs> just have a good time. Some of us are very good at that. Yes. yes. <laughs> very much so. Uh, so I guess to finish off, let's, so we're heading up, we're, well, at the time of this recording, we're almost into 2024. Something that I think about every year is, uh, you know, I hear like new year, new me. On one hand, I, I really like to believe that's the case. Like you, you really want to feel like you have a fresh start mm -hmm. and you really go into the new year, you know, the, hits midnight and you think, well, it's a new year. Like I, it's a fresh start. And then the same problems you had the day before are still around. Um, so I want to ask all of you, do you, do you, what are your thoughts on the new year? Do you think of it as a fresh start? Or is it just another day? Hmm. Sometimes some years, yes. It is a good opportunity to really put a a full stop on something and say, like, from this point on, um, I'm gonna do. It doesn't have necessarily have to be the first of January, but it can be just that general Christmas period where everybody kind of does extravagance or does enjoys the remnants of whatever it is they're gonna do, and then moves in the idea right from now on we're gonna do this, and it could be, you know, monetarily it can be health wise, it can be lots of different things, so. I have used it a couple of times in the past for that, but by and large, in general, I'm just happy enough to have survived another year <laughs> yeah. on the planet. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, sometimes, but also like right after the, you know, this is kind of you know sad and depressing. But after the, you know, um, first uh, the first couple of months for you know of the year, um, 
uh, for for me personally, um, historically have you know not had the best things happen. Hmm. So, I know, and my birthday comes up in February, and I've always had you know, unfortunately, I've had some pretty bad things happen around my birthday historically. So, I'm just like, eh, I just try to get past the holiday. Yeah, I'm just like I'm you know move my first of the year to some other part of the year. It's like my year starts in March or something. I don't know. <laughs> For me, it's something similar. It's not the first of January that makes me think, right, now I need to do something or achieve this. It's a couple of weeks in when I hit my birthday and think, crap, I'm another year older and I still haven't actually done anything yet. Oh, that's not true. I think you've accomplished more than most people do. Just the work you're doing. Yeah, you should be proud of yourself. You've you've done a lot. Once it's something yeah. is published, then I might take a moment to be proud of it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think from what I understand, you're 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 in a much better position for that than I am. So, <laughs> you know, the the stuff I want writing and it's like, yeah, um, you know, I don't I don't even want to show it to people because it's just complete mess. And I still need to finish it. You know, the last part of it. So. And then organize it into something logical and make sense. Nice. I think most authors most authors have said that your first draft is always a mess, just to like you know. So you're on the right you're on the right path. <laughs> you keep the wood the work kind of keeps on ticking up, Alex, and that's the that's the hard part. That's the bit that most people don't keep on doing. I mean, I have. If I can just grab this because it's very dark in here now. I can't actually see anything, so the, another book might land on me. I was going to say, careful. Yeah. <laughs> this is my um, book of notes. Oh, wow. So that's what I plan to be working on just in one of my universes. Right. Nice. Um, I don't think I've got a list of the books in the other universe, which is at the front of the book. No, I don't, but I've got two trilogies and three standalones planned in my other universe wow. as well. That is a very cool uh, tome-looking notebook as well, Alex. It, you know, it, has, it has that, yeah. It's even got a little right. catch on it. grimoire yep, yep. Yeah, it was, it's all about aesthetics. It's dreadful to write in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that's where, that's my ideas book. Every time I come up I mean, it's always the same process for me. I come up with something that sounds like a book. Mm -hmm. So I write it down. And then as soon as I write down the title of the book, I'll go off. My brain will work on it for a bit. And I'll come back a couple of days later and go, right, this is the end of this book. Mm -hmm. And then when I eventually get around to writing it, I'll make everything right. else up as I go along. Nice. It's a long process. process. Yeah. Really in process. And that is, yeah. as per, from what I'm aware, that's a pantser's approach to writing. You know, plotters and pantsers. Yeah. Everyone has their own process. Um, yeah, whatever works for you. But yeah, we're excited to, to see where your journey takes you, Alex. We hope you yeah. keep us updated. Oh, I'll still be posting little <laughs> ridiculous puns and snippets on the forum for people to read and tell me how much it's like Pratchett. <laughs> That's a compliment. It is? Yeah. It is, yeah, I think so. Very much. If people can recognize it as being very Pratchett and yes, then you're obviously doing something something yeah. right about it. I think like you said it yourself, it's very hard not to write humorously without being Pratchett because it is yeah. very literary, you know, it's I think that's very true. And he was just such a master at it. Hmm. Yeah. But I want to thank all of you for hanging out. It's a it's been um, a long journey, <laughs> but we've made it to a hundred. But I hope uh, we'll do it again soon. And uh, I think we'll be trying to wrap up twenty twenty three soon. Um, mm -hmm. So if any way you can make it, but cool. So in the meantime, uh, Chris, where can people find you? You could probably find me on my YouTube channel if I decide to release any videos for the end of the year. I probably should get on that the next the uh, next day or two uh otherwise you can find me in the patreon forums or probably in a future friday conversation at some stage yeah ho hopefully i'd hate to bother you all the time but you know <laughs> <laughs>
and uh, Chevy Poe. Uh, you can find me on page chewing. Um, I'm on Twitter, uh, on Goodreads too. And I don't know if you can direct message someone on Goodreads, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can be found there. Um, Maybe you'll uh, you'll share your, your your transformer collection with us on the forum. Nice. Yeah, something. you know, I I have a little table over here I need to put out because I want to like take a picture of some of them. Um, and so I'm gonna show some of them off, you know, sometime soon. Nice. You can see all the Optimus Primes. Mm. <laughs> nice. And like, Why do you have so many different versions of the same character, you know, same figure? And I'm like, because it's Optimus Prime. Like, why not? So, yeah, why not? And uh, Alex, tell us where people can find you and where can they, uh, is there any place you're posting updates uh, or, other, or is it just on the forum? Um, most of my updates these days are on the forum. I am on Twitter and I do look at it every now and then. Um, I, <laughs> I comment a bit more on Blue Sky than I do on Twitter. Mm. Um, but yeah, mostly, sense. if you want to read any of the stuff I've added, then it's all on the forum. Mm. Just search for the word cozy and it will come up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yes, you can find me on uh, pagestream.com, best place to find me, and every, all the updates are there. Uh, on the blog or join our forums if you're not already there to join us for a future friday but thanks all of you i really appreciate you guys spending taking time out of your day and hanging out and just kind of uh started the new year and it just kind of lined up to have 100 episodes at the end of 2023 but people listening to this will be 2024 either way i really appreciate it and uh we'll talk very soon thanks everyone who dropped by uh on the on the stream and posted comments and hung out with us really appreciate you as well We'll talk to everyone soon.